Hey guys, and welcome to a sort of cage match video uh, dedicated to narrative games and uh, kind of all the offerings we have either that are on Kickstarter right now, will soon to be a pledge manager, or are already in the pledge manager phase, or maybe almost delivered, or just, well, just some of the big ones. I just really wanted to kind of talk about the um, differences and comparisons, uh, and just kind of my thoughts on a whole bunch of them. So we're going to be talking about Arena. We're going to be talking about Storm Sunder, Madara, Osworn, and Trespass Odyssey, Tainted Grail, all that's going to be here, so let's go on and get into it. Now actually, before I get into it, I just wanted to say that while this is focused on narrative games and a whole bunch, I do kind of have an idea of perhaps doing a series of kind of a cage match style series where I pit one game against another, and I talk about both of them, and then I pick a winner for me. I don't know, what, what do you guys think about that? Would that be something you'd be interested in seeing in the future? I could do themed ones, I could do ones that are relevant to Kickstarter at the time, I could just do kind of, you know, uh, some older ones, some, you know, genre ones, or maybe even opposite genres, or just... Um, big versus small. There's a lot I could do with that. Um, so it kind of has, you know, I guess my creative juices pumping a little bit. It sounds something fun to do, but I would like to know, would that be something you're interested in? Please, please let me know in the comments below. You guys know I'm always reading all of your comments. I can't quite respond to all of them these days. You guys, <laughs> you guys are just a talkative bunch and I love it, but I do read every single comment. And, uh, and so I would love to kind of get a sense of you guys commenting down the people that take the time to actually like scroll down and comment, like, that's my audience. That's you guys are the community and uh, I, I care about what you guys feel and think about things. So honestly curious, let me know in the comments below. Uh, would you like a cage match style series? They should be fairly easy to do. So I don't, it wouldn't like affect any other of my content. It would pretty much just be bonus stuff. I don't know if I'd, you know, maybe do them on like uh, Wednesdays or Thursdays or something. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. All right. Anyway, let's get into this video here talking about narrative games. Now, again, I'm not going to pick a clear one winner thing because there's a whole lot going on and way too many games. Uh, it wouldn't quite be a thing. And I like a lot of these. So I'm just going to just kind of talk in general. But I do have a bucket list here. And again, this is unscripted. I just have some bullet points in front of me here. So if you appreciate that kind of raw you know, <laughs> just me talking to a microphone and whatever that entails, <laughs> be sure to let me know. Or if you would have preferred something more scripted where I'd probably be halfway through the video by now. Okay, uh, first one is PvP. Do you want a PvP mode? If so, Arena. That's what you would go back Arena or it's already done. Go wait for the pledge manager for Arena. Uh, they have a direct PvP skirmish mode that is actually very, very good. Um, I, in fact, even if you were only interested in PvP, I would still recommend Arena. It is solid, and, uh, I, I, I see it as just as good as, like, Mythic Battles Pantheon, or, or Hate, or, well, I'd put Hate above pretty much most skirmish games. I really love that game, but, uh, in that category, like, really good, solid team building, um, my team versus your team skirmish style game. It's actually quite good there. And really the only one, everything else here is narrative. So if you want a little bit of, if you're a little competitive, want a little bit of competition, Arena's, Arena's your game. All right, let's talk about theme. So they all have different themes here. Arena is high fantasy. Now, I don't know how common knowledge it is to have a high fantasy versus low fantasy. Low fantasy would be Oathsworn. So low fantasy is more realistic fantasy. That doesn't mean there's not magic, but it means you're, you're not carrying, you know, a, a foot wide sword with, shoulder pads that have spikes coming out and a glowing ember dragon chest plate and uh, you know you're not flying on dragons typically uh, low fantasy is typically more realistic in that sense and a little bit more grounded and typically a little bit more grungy and dirty high fantasy is uh, your your world of warcraft it's flying on a dragon with your glowing blue sword that's you know the size of you that you know it captures people's souls and then explodes and like magic explosions or some junk like that so arena is that high fantasy it's a colorful you know big shoulder pads you know kind of over the top fantasy the fantastical fantasy version of it osworn is low fantasy it's very much medieval times with a little bit of magic essentially a little bit of kind of uh, uh made up stuff that fantasy element there uh, but, you know, there's obviously more. Tainted Grail is otherworldly survival horror. So it, it, it's, it's that survival horror, uh, theme where, but also that otherworldly part where it's like 
everything's a little off. It's that weirdness in in Tainted Grill, right? Where, you know, you might have, it's not just a bear. It's a bear with two heads and it's growing like a tree out its side or some junk like that. Or, you know, that, that, that kind of headless horseman style stuff there. Madara's anime, so, I mean, that's way different. I mean, we want colorful and bright and cheery and not always, but, um, or big eyes, that's, that's an, anime's your thing. And Storm Sunder is actually kind of an alt history fantasy. So we have like, uh, three fantasies, uh, then the Tainted Grill, which is other world survival horror, and then the anime Madara. Uh, Storm Sunder, I say alt history because, um, like, uh, the priest mentions God with a capital G and holds a cross, and they have this, you know, the Egyptians and the kind of Nordic race people, um, and so they have that kind of stuff, but then they also have, like, vampires and demons and angels, and so it's kind of like our world, but then kind of not. All right, next up is combat. I'm going to kind of describe all these in a sentence and then explain them. Tainted Grail is mostly singular, pure card combo-based. Madara is pure, non-deterministic, dice-based. Osworn is singular, non-deterministic, dice-plus-card. Stormsunder is co-op, semi-deterministic, dice-plus-card. Aeon Trespass Odyssey is co-op, non-deterministic, dice-based. And Arena is mostly singular, semi-deterministic, dice-based. Now, I'm saying a lot of words there, so let me kind of explain that. When I say Tainted Grail is a mostly singular card combo-based game, it's because when you're playing that... Typically, fights are often on your own, sometimes with another person, but a lot of times you're going to be doing it singular, as in just you, and it's it's a card combo system, so you're building up combos with a, a deck of cards. Uh, there are no dice or anything like that. It's just card combos, and that's kind of your, your combat there. Madara is non-deterministic dice based, so you're rolling dice, and then deterministic means uh, I have an attack of 7, you have a defense of 5, so I'm always going to do 2 damage to you. Uh, that's deterministic. If, uh, Blood Rage, where you're, you're, um, minus the cards. When you have the people on the maps, and the people make up your strength, you can see, I have nine strength. If I move all of them in there, he only has five strength. My nine strength will beat his five strength. That's deterministic. And there's no random chance in that. Uh, again, the card thing does an unknown. Uh, but even then, that's not really random. So, the non-deterministic dice plus card means you're rolling dice, and that's your, your damage. Storm Sunder is co-op semi-deterministic dice card. So I say semi-deterministic and I say uh, co-op because you can uh, work together as kind of a, a team to do stuff. There's like debuffs and stuff like that. And additionally, you can play cards on other people's turns to buff their attacks or to give them extra power or to heal them. Or there, There's a multitude of things you do in other people's turns to help them with their turn and affect their turn. So that's where the combat, the co-op really comes in. Semi-deterministic because there's a basic damage and there's a known defense. And the defense is static and then the basic damage can be enhanced with um, other cards or a dice roll. So it's semi-deterministic, dice plus cards, and there's some co-op elements in there. Aeon Trespass Odyssey is co-op, non-deterministic, dice-based. And so with Aeon Trespass, you, you really get this co-op, they call it hard co-op there, where um, even if you, sometimes you might even want to purposely miss an attack, uh, just because it'll give you all these other tokens, and these tokens can be used on another person's turn, so you can set up people for better attacks or for a certain advantage or to do a certain thing. Um, and then, of course, it's non-deterministic because, again, you're rolling dice. And so instead of knowing and determining exactly what's going to happen, you're rolling dice and find out after that die roll. Arena is mostly singular, semi-deterministic dice-based. Uh, the reason it's semi-deterministic is because uh, your card has a default uh, attack value if you miss in arena and but you're still rolling a die and depending on that die roll other things will happen but it's deterministic what will happen so it's either this or this um and and then it's singular because for the most part you're you're just fighting the person as you now obviously as a team you can do stuff like well i'm going to push them in line of sight and then you're going to do your straight line attack stuff like that always happens uh, you know there's a meta around here but the combat itself is just you doing the action all right, let's talk about story a little bit. I mean, that's what these are, right? These narrative-driven games. Uh, Tainted Grail and Oathsworn are dark and moody. So if you want to be depressed, play Tainted Grail or play Oathsworn. No, I'm it, it, I, I, I jest a little bit. I'm not sure the sun has ever shined on either of these game worlds. I don't think the sun even exists. I think it's always cloudy, and they're just assuming there's a sun there. Uh, and, and it might not be. It, it tends to be wet 
and dank and dirty and smelly and vile and and just you know bloody and you know uh, oppressive oppressive is probably the best word for these i personally love this kind of stuff but not everybody's into it so if you're into you know moodiness if you love moody batman then tainted grail and osworn are your cup of tea storm sunder madara arena and and aeon trespass odyssey are like an action adventure they're like the indiana jones um they're 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 inoffensive and you're just going on an adventure and you're having a lot of fun doing it and cool things are happening all the time um i i'm not really lumping on uh it, it gets kind of hard with the light heartedness because like storm sunder uh madara even arena have like these uh kind of more light-hearted moments uh, but then they have like really serious moments too. So it's kind of flip floppy around like that. But really they're at the core of their action adventure. Again, they're, they're, they're your Indiana Jones. They're, you're just that fun popcorn movie. You're going to have a, a, you're going to, you're going on an adventure. All right. Let's talk about complexity. Now this is actually, I put this in the middle, um, mainly because I didn't want the video to like drag at the end, but complexity can be defined very different ways. I don't, even know I know Board Game Geek has a complexity rating. I God only knows what that means to them. I, I imagine most people are defining it differently when they even rate a complexity rating. So who knows? Is complexity the amount of rules you have? Is complexity how much those rules interact with each other? Is complexity just the amount of like components and stuff like that? Is complexity the 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 fact that your the, your rules that you do have are highly complex, though there might not be a lot of them? What is complexity? I, you know it's. How I would define it is if if it's easy to understand or if there's stuff where you're going to continually... In other words, how often am I going to use a rule book? If it's a game where I'm going to be looking at the rule book for several play sessions into it because I'm, there's so many different rules, for me, it's typically quantity of rules... Um, mainly because I, I tend to like, you know, oh, I, oh, I forgot to include that or, oh, I, I, I didn't even remember that was a thing or something like that. If there's so much going on, um, and I would categorize a lot of those as like Kingdom of Death, Monster, Shadows of Brimstone, right? All those kind of games that have like a rule for any specific situation. It's like, if for any situation you can think of, there's a specific rule just for that. Some of it's cool. It's like, hey, if your character coughs, what debuff does that get? Well, you know, KDM probably has a, a rule written somewhere about, oh, your character has a cough. You get, you know, minus two agility. I, I don't know, some junk like that. So that's kind of how I'm defining complexity here. And I'm just kind of listing them in general order from the most complex to the least complex. Now, I will also note before I give you this list that um, I actually like the bottom portion more. I prefer my games to be super easy to explain and super nuanced in their implementation. I like streamlined games. That's why Blood Rage is one of my favorite games. I like games that have a couple rules, but the implementation of them and how they interact with each other can get so deep and strategic and complex that I still, uh, you know, I still get that brain puzzle feel out of it without just being inundated with rules. Um, so I tend to lean that way, but other people really like the rules heavy ones and that's fine too. And I could be in the mood for one or the other. Sometimes I just want to lay down a game and have some fun. Sometimes I really want this deep strategic kind of puzzle game, uh, in which case I tend to go for those heavier games. So it just depends. Okay, so with that said, in order, I would say, and again, subjective here, Madara with its 9-point font, 75-page rulebook, Aeon Trespass Odyssey, Arena, Tainted Grail, Osworn, Storm Sunder. Now, I actually have these grouped on the, my bullet points. So in there, I have Madara on its own as kind of the top. Then I have a middle section and these middle weight games, these middle complexity games, and Trespass Odyssey, Arena, and Tainted Grail kind of grouped together in that kind of uh, medium portion there. And then bottom tier there on complexity, the ones I could explain very quickly, the ones my kids could play very easily, Osworn and Storm Thunder. Not to say any of them are bad, either at the top or the bottom, but if, if you're sensitive to a lot of rules you might want to be towards the bottom. If you're not, then you probably want to be towards the top. You know, just just whatever. Okay, anyway, campaign length. Now, again, this is another tricky one. Are we talking core box only? Are we talking expansions? What, what does that mean? Are we talking stretch goals? When It's so hard to talk about the campaign length, especially because they're variable. So all I'm going to say here is they're all long. They're all long. Now, there is an exception to that, and the exception would be the Aeon Trespass Odyssey Prelude. You can get that on the cheap. I'll talk about that actually very soon. But the Prelude is just kind of like the intro portion. It's the part I got as the demo copy when I was to review it for you guys. It features most of the 
uh, rules, though not all of them. There's no like god forms and stuff like that. So uh, you can't like ride any of the uh, miniatures and though they might add mounting to it. I, I don't know. But either way, it's like a, a, it's a self-contained story uh, introducing you to the main story and uh, it's kind of on its own. So if you want like a, a 12 hour narrative campaign you might want to look into that uh it's kind of unique in that sense none of the other ones have that all the other ones are big and long and 100 plus hour kind of junk going on uh 75 hour plus you know stuff like that but uh that prelude one is is probably the standout difference there so if you're into that that that's that's yours uh there will be links down below by the way to my reviews uh and also to their pledge managers or kickstarter pages whichever one's applicable Okay, so I mentioned it, but price, right? How much do these cost? There's a wide variety here. And again, are we talking core box? Are we talking expansions? Miniatures versus not miniatures? Stretch goals versus not? I'll explain the differences, but some of these will be listed twice because they have several different options. I'll go from most expensive to cheapest. The most expensive is Oathsworn. That core box at $180 with miniatures is the most expensive. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it now. Of course, you're getting hips, characters, you're getting gigantic, you know, miniatures for the enemies. It, there's a lot there. It's not like, I don't think any of these are a bad value. None of these are. All of these are a great value. Uh, and it's some of the shining examples of how much game stuff you can get on Kickstarter. But Oathsworn definitely has that highest price tag at 180 Next would be Storm Sunder Core Box at 150 after that would be Aeon Trespass Odyssey's core box at 130 Madara's core box on its latest uh, campaign at 115 Now, we also then have the Osworn Standees version at 100 So kind of right in the middle of this list, you have the Standees version of Osworn, but it's still 100 bucks. Now we're going sub-100. Tainted Grail was actually only 90 at conversion rates today. Uh, I don't know what it was at the time. I, I, I forget. Then you have the Arena Core only, so that's no stretch goals, just the core box of Arena. So that's still a lot of game, 70 bucks. And then that Aeon Trespass Odyssey Prelude I mentioned, that kind of shorter campaign, also $70. Now, if price isn't an issue, welcome to the hobby. We're going to love you here. <laughs> you back whatever. If, if, if you need to pick and choose and you're trying to decide and you're like, you know what? I could get Arena Core only and I could get Tainted Grail for the price of Aeon Trespass Odyssey. Well, no, that's not true. But the price of Oath Sworn. Just about, yeah, actually, yeah, so you can get Tainted Grail and Arena for one Oathsworn. And, unless you're going Standy Oathsworn. Maybe you go Standy Oathsworn plus the Antrust Trespass Odyssey, uh, Prelude. That's the same as a regular Oathsworn. So essentially you got the Aeon Trespass Odyssey Prelude for free. Uh, you can figure that out. That's kind of the, the prices there, but, uh, definitely a range. Anywhere from 70 to 180 is the range we're getting on these. So it just depends a lot on the amount of components needed to tell the story. Uh, again, all of these are like 100 page campaigns. I mean, they're, they're, they're big. All right. Lastly, noteworthy uniqueness. This is just kind of a catch all that I'm keeping at the end where I'm just going to talk about some things that might matter to you about some of these that act differently than others. Uh, Oathsworn has the best miniatures with hips, plastic heroes. So if, if you want miniatures to paint and you want them good, uh, also they're higher scale. They're like 45 millimeter, 42 millimeter. They're, they're big. Like they're not small. They're not a 32 millimeter. That's not, certainly not a 28. Um, so they are going to be exquisitely detailed. Uh, I've seen the program that they use to actually make it. It's all going to be push fit. It's, it's going to be awesome. So definitely the highest quality miniatures there at Oathsworn. It's also the best solo game. They have a solo version where uh, you get uh, essentially instead of all the cards and all that kind of big stuff, you can also save on table space this way too. And it can, it can actually make it more streamlined too. So if you want to, if you want to dump Oathsworn to make it even easier for somebody to play, you can do this. I did it with my youngest daughter. She's no, she was nine at the time and uh, she just, it, it would have taken her a while to get the card player uh, working. She could have done it, but it would have taken a while. I gave her this little card. It's awesome. It's essentially a character card. Like you'd get in most dungeon crawlers and it has like a set amount of, pay this amount of uh, resource to do the special ability of the special ability of the special ability. And then that's it. It's a super small package and it, it, you can still level up and get new versions of the card. So it, 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 it's a great solo option. Or if you want to play with younger children, um, it depends on <laughs> on your kids when it comes to Oathsworn, I imagine. But anyway, so best solo, best minis. That's definitely Oathsworn. Also highest cost. So it's what it is. Next up, Tainted Grail. That, they have the most twisted enemies. So if you're really into something that is just off-putting or you like that kind of like, 
um, something normal, like a bear or something like that, but then made weird. Um, or if you want like a knight on a horse, but there's vines growing on the horse out of the person. And, you know, they have like a, a their spine uh, with their head attached way out of their body. It just there's some weird crap going on in Tainted Grail. Also of note is it has a very different combat system than all of these. It's very separated. Uh, and what I mean by that is it's not really, um, par- the, it, it's just a card. It's a, it's like a card mini game. Uh, if you've ever played like Mario Party or something like that, you know, those like random mini games. It's kind of like that. It's kind of, it's very removed from the other stuff. The other stuff, it's like, hey, I have this big sword so I can like push them back and do all this stuff. That kind of stuff isn't here. It's just card games where you're matching symbols. Um, so it's very removed from that. Um, uh, though, again, it's also the only one where you're doing card combos, and I like card combos, that's always fun, and you get that kind of deck building thing there, but it is very far removed from the story and the theme and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they got some great art, but the, the game mechanic itself almost seems like a whole different game. Madara, well, it's anime, so if you're into anime, that's your choice. There you go. Go back Madara and be in love with it. Uh, it has the most open character build system, so you can use any weapon you want, and you can pick your skills, and you can really make your character your unique character. Um, it's also the most traditional dungeon crawler, so if you're much more into a traditional dungeon crawler, like a Descent kind of thing, uh, if Descent 2nd Edition was like your jam, then you might be leaning more towards Madara as a kind of more traditional dungeon crawler. Alien Trespass Odyssey, it's got crafting, uh, that's kind of unique, at least among this group. I know there are other narrative games. I, I gotta limit the scope somewhere. These are kind of the latest and, uh, most pertinent, uh, when I see questions being asked. So I'm probably saying that way too late in the video, but whatever. Uh, Metroidvania map exploration, I have noted here. So it, it has this st- style of map exploration that's different where it's like, you'll go to a place and be like, oh, I can't go there. And then you'll have to go and like find an item or research a way to be able to go to that part of the map. Uh, which is very Metroidvania, right? It's like, oh, you need the super missile for that colored door style of exploration there. It's also the most epic in scale. So a lot of these tell, all these tell a story. This tale, though, is much more, um, about, uh, politics and wars and kings and you're interacting with royalty and you're doing this, you, you, you got your whole, like, uh, warship where people, you're sending people off to research stuff. It's that kind of almost, uh, uh, civilization management style stuff there. You're trading and, 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 uh, playing diplomacy. And so if you want that kind of epic scale, uh, that's definitely it in the, in the story and also the miniatures. So the miniatures as well. Um, while they're the, the same scale, they have like little tiny cowls and stuff like on the base. So because you're playing these big people, everything about Ant Trespass Odyssey is big. It also has the best co-op mechanics. So their co- hard co-op mechanics, I think, are the most integrated when it comes to you might do your entire turn just to set up another person for a turn. It's kind of taking that like combo attack and putting it up between people's uh moves. And so you're kind of looking at the hero's round as you're all doing one big move. And you can certainly do that. You can be like, well, I'm going to um, lay these cards down. That's going to let you or your these tokens down. That's going to let you do this with that to where you, you make them vulnerable and you, you just chew through that you know, level three, you know, body part card. And then uh, after that, then that other person with the heavy attack, but it's really inaccurate, he's going to be able to use all that stuff and just be able to cleave through him. I mean, you can, it's very, very co-op driven uh, when you end up playing that. You are never just thinking about you as a single person. Not once in any of my play sessions did we view it that way. It's the the most unsingular combat uh, system I can think of, actually. Next is Arena, and that is the best integration of story into a combat part of the game. This is why I said it was my favorite campaign, because the campaign is the entire game. Um, it, it, it's not, it's not even necessarily like it's the best story or anything like that. It's just uh, most of these, all these other games, you have story, and then you stop the story a little bit to have combat. Now, the combat's relative to the story. Um, and s- stuff like Storm Thunder can change kind of how the combat will be depending on the story. So you can get stuff like that in there. But typically you're, you're, you have a story section, that narrative part, and then you have the board game part where you're actually playing the board game. And it, for the most part, they're, they're two separate things. You know, you have this phase and then this phase. And Arena doesn't do that nearly as much. And in fact, with their Tenaris stuff, their new stuff that you're going to be able to pledge manage soon, 
Uh, they're doing that even more where you're, you're talking to NPCs during com- like quote unquote combat while your, your miniature's on the board or you're in the middle of a mission. Uh, they're doing, a, they already had these event systems set up to where stuff's happening there. Uh, it just, uh, really impressed with the integration of the story into the combat there. So if you want kind of story throughout everything like that, um, that's, the arena's your thing there. Also it has puzzles and riddles and like really hard puzzles and riddles. Um, I think of myself as quite smart and we were scratching our heads on some of these. So, um, if you like doing that kind of stuff, again, it's the only one that has anything close to that. Um, and it's pretty robust too. And then Storm Sunder actually has a lot of humor in it. So, um, you can probably tell this from their campaign page, but there, uh, it, I, it reads like Princess Bride. Like, uh, that's kind of the best way I could put it. Um, where it's, it's written pretty matter of fatly, but when you read it, it's, it's a joke and, and you chuckle to yourself and you keep reading. It's just a humorous. It's not like I'm, you know, smacking the rule book down, you know, knee slapping, you know, laugh out loud. Um, but it can be pretty humorous and, uh, definitely a standout here in that regard too. Like it, it is, it, there's quite a bit of humor in there, both in the story and the card. Uh, lore and all that kind of stuff. It also has the best character development and party story mechanics. It's very much based on these old Bioware, Knights of the Republic style kind of games where the, the, your party matters and they'll interact with each other a lot more. And just the character arts, arcs that you'll get where, you know, people can join the, the dark side essentially. And, you know, then when people, and it, it's like compounding. So not only can like, you can have a character and this is like in the story. Um, so, but I'm not going to spoil anything. One of your characters can totally join the bad guys and it can be prevented if somebody that they're close to at this point in the story is there with them but if you don't have them in their party they're not there to stop them and then when they find out then that person reacts to it too so not only do you have one of your characters leave the party and join a bad guy but then this other person is like you know oh man i I should have been there and i can't believe i wasn't and now this terrible thing has happened and it changes them too and they actually get new cards and and change kind of their personality and stuff like that so some really in-depth character development there so if you into if you're into character development versus um these characters that are going through a story um if you're into these are the characters and this is their story that's definitely storm sunder uh by far more than these other ones so uh anyway that's a uh, a lot of kind of you know, comparisons and contrasts and lists and numbers and ideas and things. And I, I don't know. I, hopefully this helped you guys kind of understand maybe a little bit how each one plays, maybe a little bit how, um, you know, one would fit your desires more. Like if, if, if you're really into, you know, a dark moody story, well, then, you know, I probably want Oathsworn or Tainted Grail, right? Or if you're like, you know what? I love freaking riding Pegasuses and shooting gigantic bows. Well, that's probably arena, right? You want that high fantasy stuff. Or, you know what, all I care about is I want character development. I don't, I don't necessarily want a good story and that be it. I want like these characters to matter and the people I pick matter and the story changing depending on who I pick and stuff like that. Well, that's Storm Sunder, right? There, there's all these different ones. You know, if I want the epic, you know, kind of gal- galactic scale kind of thing, well, that's your Aeon Trespass Odyssey. There's, there's a lot here based off price, based off length, based off availability, um, based off combat, you know, like, how am I playing this game? Am I just playing cards or am I rolling dice and that's it? And so it's, you know, went wild and crazy. Is it, uh, all co-op driven, you know, whatever it is. Um, hopefully that helped you guys out. If not, if you still have a question, I have played, uh, uh quite a few games, uh, at this point in my life, especially around these, I tend to be drawn around dungeon crawlers and I love stories. So the fact that these are kind of meshing together, I'm in love lately. This is great. Um, let me know in the comments below. I'll, me or somebody else I'm sure can answer. You guys are a great community. Uh, I, I love every time I go down in the comments and see somebody ask a question, one of you guys answered it. Uh, you have no idea how awesome that is. Uh, I'm like a proud father over here, just kind of beaming like, ah, yeah, look, look, look at my people being so helpful and awesome. And, you know, anyway, uh, do let me know in the comments below if you do have a question about either of these. Uh, but hopefully I was able to, to answer that. I guess I will end with one thing and this will kind of be a cage match thing. If I had to pick just one and for a very personal reason, I've said this in the comments in my previous videos, so you can check me on that. I'm not just making this up right now. Um, and even on Facebook too. Uh, if I had to pick just one, I would pick Storm Sunder. Now, here's why. My wife likes it the most. She's by far my biggest game partner. We play a lot of these two-player, and then when my group comes in, either we're playing two different campaigns, or we're playing one two-player and one, 
you know, three, four player, depending on how much it, it supports and whether or not my kids can help play too, or you know, who shows up or whatever. But, uh, by and large, I play with my wife more than anybody else. And she loves the Egyptian theme. She's much more into dungeon crawling stuff. And Storm Sunder is very much a dungeon crawl. Um, but with like skirmish, you know, kind of styles too. And she likes that. So, uh, Storm Sunder, if I, if I had to pick any of them, it'd be Storm Sunder for that reason alone. Uh, just because she likes it so much. I don't know how much that helps you guys because again, that's super personal to me. Um, but, but I'm just trying to be real and honest with you guys. And, uh, that's, that's definitely the one I would pick. Uh, having, having played these, that's, that's the one she would pick. So it's the one I, I would pick too. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I super appreciate it. I will have a painting video, uh, in, in the next few days. So be on the lookout for that. And it's almost a new month. You know what that means? Kickstarter monthly video. So be on the lookout for that too. Will March be as crazy as February was? Man, I hope not. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you really, really soon.